Hey, this is uh, Walter Osley, and uh, you're watching me paint the, I guess, color, the cover to my Cubicles graphic novel. Uh, Cubicles, the movie, the graphic novel. Uh, this is my first attempt ever at recording and voicing over a, uh, a process like this, uh, so hopefully I won't make too many mistakes. Um, right now I'm using a Copic Sketch marker. Uh, Copic, I believe that's how you say it. Um, I love the marker because it kind of has this felt brush tip, uh, so it's almost like using a brush, um, but a lot easier. Uh, so right now I'm just laying down the colors, and I'm pretty much just laying down flat colors on top of a ink wash I did earlier, and I'm letting the ink wash add all of the shading and texture um, to it, and really the, I'm just putting the flat colors over it to... Uh, to make it more visually exciting, I guess. Uh, I recorded doing the ink wash, um, but of course I used a crappy setting on my camera, so it looks horrible. But if you want to see it, at the end of this video I have it um, playing. I just didn't want to put it first because everyone would turn it off because it looks really bad. Um, but if you want to see it, you'll be able to see it later. Um, so right now I'm just putting the colors on top. Um, this is the first time I tried doing Copics over an ink wash, and I'm pretty happy with the results, but uh, I noticed you need to use really light markers, not too dark. If you do too dark, uh, the marker will overpower the wash, and um, you lose all that detail, and you just have that one solid color, and it looks a little boring. So, Luckily, I did a, a couple tests before um, I did this final final piece. Um, so I'm skipping around a little bit. I cut some pieces out because I figured you didn't need to uh, see me color the entire thing. I don't really have too much technique here. Obviously you can see I'm kind of just <laughs> coloring in. Um, not really taking my time or going with the flow of the picture in a lot of the cases. I'm just, just putting the color down uh, as quick as possible. Um, you can see on some of those little uh, suckers, I'm leaving white space open, um, which I'm going to use for highlights later. Right now it doesn't really look like much, it kind of just looks like I didn't color the whole entire piece in. Um, but later on it will look a little bit more like a highlight. Uh, that's kind of the thing with, with using markers. I'm more of a, a digital computer painter, colorist. Um, I don't do too much traditional stuff, but I felt like I wanted to, to put some color on this piece. Um, is you have to think ahead and plan ahead. On the computer, I can put whatever I want down and erase it or color on top of it, but with, with traditional stuff, I kind of have to know ahead of time what I'm going to do. Um, so it's a lot more work in that sense. So right now you can see I'm, I'm adding the, the green to the, to the top of the tentacles. Uh, once I do that, that little leftover empty spot on the tentacle starts popping a little bit more to where it actually looks like a highlight. Um, and right here I'm using um, kind of like a flesh color to uh, color in Wally and Oss's face here. Um, which uh, after I did it I didn't like it at all because um, it looks r way too colorful. Usually when I digitally color them um, their faces don't get that much color, so I actually went in with a uh, Copic blending marker. Uh, I don't know why they call it blending marker, because it doesn't blend. It To me, it looks like it erases it, uh, but it worked for me in this case, because I was able to take some of that color back out um, and not have it be so powerful. Uh, yeah, right here, I'm kind of adding some, some little dots to the background tentacles because um, I thought it looked a little boring and flat, so I'm just adding some tentacles um, where where the tentacles curve to add some excitement there and break the curves a little bit. And here I'm using a uh, Sharpie poster paint marker um, to add a little bit of sheen to the tentacles. Um, it's a pretty cool marker. I know a lot of people like using white markers to go back in and add some, some excitement to the piece. And, I do the same. So here I'm just kind of willy-nilly laying it down uh, to where I think it, you might get a highlight. Um, I also use it to break up 
lines a lot. Um, and you can see I'm just kind of hashing it out right here. I'm not being very uh, precise. Um, a lot of those white lines are going out of the character. Um, and I th just think that kind of sloppiness adds a little bit more of uh, energy to the piece. So here's the final piece. Uh, I can't see what my camera is showing you, so I'm <laughs> kind of just hoping it's showing you something. Um, and here is the bad quality stuff. Yeah, I don't even know if you can tell what's going on here. I, I have a, a regular brush, probably like a synthetic sable, uh, number two. I'm trying to show you what I'm doing here. Uh, basically, I have two glasses next to me. One's filled with ink, another one's filled with water. So I'll dip the brush in the ink, and then I'll dip the brush into the water and kind of try to distill the ink until I get it to the shade I want. Um, I don't think this is technically ink wash, uh, but it's how I do it because it's a lot quicker. Um, I took an art class recently, and the way my art teacher had us do ink washes took forever. Um, it was a good learning experience, but uh, I, don't, I don't have that much time to, to spend. Um, so I basically just get the ink to the color I want it, or to the shade I want it, um, and, uh, or value, I guess, and, and just put it down. Sometimes I get it too dark or too light, um, but I kind of just go with it and let that uh, be a happy accident, or at least that's what I tell myself. So Here you can see I'm, I'm adding the, uh, the dots onto the piece. Hopefully you can see that. That's pretty much it. So uh, here's the final piece and uh, if you need to find me just check me out at uh, walterosley.com. Catch you later.